Today, I'm going to be talking about some really problematic behaviour that you can get from stepchildren that is way and above over what you'd expect to have to be dealing with. And this can be extremely frustrating for, for step parents because you think you're walking into a family with children of a certain age and you can find yourself dealing with all sorts of behaviours that are sort of attention seeking or quite nasty, bullying, aggressive, hyper, that kind of thing, or behaviours that um, should really are really inappropriate for the child's age. They're much more babyish than they should be. They're, they're, they're eating their meals with little spoons when they should be of an age where they could where they can eat with, with, with more grown-up utensils, or maybe they're still bedwetting aged 10 and 11. And those kinds of behaviours or, or, um, that are real signs that the children are struggling. But it's a really difficult thing for a step-parent to manage when they come into the home. Thanks for joining me. I post once a week, so do subscribe to my channel and press the notification bell and I'll let you know every time I post. This is very common in step families because, of so, because there's been so much change. By definition, a step family is formed as a result of loss. Loss of the way life was before. But one thing's for certain that when you come into, onto the scene, you then represent another change to their lives. And while some children can cope with all the changes and still be okay, another very normal response to it is to adopt something that will make you feel a little bit safe. So maybe keep to a rigidly to a routine or regress. Or they may want their baby cup or they may act out in some way like I've described before. So the secret with this as a step parent is to recognise that this behaviour isn't naughty. It isn't something they're doing on purpose to upset you, to get attention, these kinds of things. But the question is, how do you then solve it? Well, first of all, observe it and recognise it for what it is. Build a trusting relationship with the child. They need you to be able to build a trusting relationship so they can tell you things. And then talk to them about what's triggering them. Maybe it's when you announce you're going to go out or maybe somebody's coming over or they have to, go, they have to change houses again or something. Find out what the triggers are that is making them have this kind of not okay response. The trigger will be causing a stress response and our bodies, all of our bodies, respond to stress by releasing chemicals into our system which we react to. So one of these uh, stress hormones is, is, is cortisol. And when it's released into our body, we have a kind of fight or flight response. And we, we will either run away or, or attack. But these behaviours can be lots of different behaviours, as we've already discussed. But the children will be displaying this in a response to a real feeling they're having in their body. Which is, which is produced as a real feeling as a result of these real chemicals being released. So, talk to them about the trigger. Talk to them about how it makes them feel. Talk to them about where in their body they feel it. Because the cortisol response or the stress hormone response normally has 
will, will have an effect somewhere. Maybe they get headaches or maybe they feel dry or tight in the throat or maybe they, they, they've got a, a tummy ache or maybe it's further down on their abdomen or maybe they, they feel, begin to feel breathless and they can't breathe. Ask them where in their body they're feeling this response. And then get them to try and see that this triggered response is only a trigger to a false fear. They're responding to something that isn't true. And see if you can't get them to recognise when these triggers happen and how their responses take place afterwards. And then talk to them about employing strategies to help them calm down instead of respond inappropriately. So maybe that's about breathing slowly or taking some physical exercise or taking time out, go to their room or listen to music or there are strategies that you can employ to self-soothe. See if you can talk to them about what they could do to help them manage this reaction they're having. And then notice, notice next time that they're triggered and see how they respond to it. And if they can adopt a new strategy for dealing with it, praise them and help them. In addition and alongside this, it's really helpful to build a child's self-esteem and self-confidence. Give them responsibility for things, help them achieve things, help them to feel better about themselves and a little bit more confident. With the combination of helping them feel more self-confident and helping them recognise the fear they feel, feel as just triggers that they can then begin to manage for themselves, the behaviours should recede and become less frustrating and less annoying for you and altogether better for the child. Be Stepwise offers sessions, workshops, email response service, booklets, and you can find details of how to contact us on our website, Instagram, Twitter, in the directions box below.